So one area I did see that you spoke about was kind of using devices that we already have, like mobile phones with special software on, as ways of, I, I guess, diagnostic or early diagnostic treatment. Could you talk about that a little bit? Because I think that's something that maybe could be, you know, more affordable and more easily available. Yes, the, indeed, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the medtech field, for example, is also making great uh, progress. So currently there are, um, what we actually will see is that uh, the diagnostic tools of the future uh, won't be any more big devices that uh, are found in the practice of your general physician or in the hospital. They will become minor, uh, become very small and become invisible actually, and be implemented into your own environment, into your home and uh, watch and clothing and so on, uh, and into your smartphone. So your smartphone will be converted into a diagnostic tool. Uh, and that can happen in many ways. For example, your smartphone could analyze your voice to assess your risk of heart disease or Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease. Because we know that often uh, decades uh, or at least 15 years before people get Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease, um, there are already changes uh, in how they speak or how they move. And, and these changes are uh, imperceptible for humans or medical doctors to notice but uh, they can be noticed by AI and smart algorithms. Uh, so it's possible that you make a few phone calls and then you get a message from your phone saying, I analyzed uh, your voice and it seems that you are at an increased risk of getting Parkinson's disease 10 years from now. So please consult a, a neurologist on these or these dates. Uh, so it's a likely scenario where, uh, yeah, your smartphone will become your doctor in your pocket. Um, and many other ways uh, that a smartphone can diagnose or, or actually be a very useful preventative tool. For example, your swiping behavior and uh, the way you swipe on your smartphone or type could be analyzed to also assess your risk uh, of getting Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease uh, many years from now. Uh, or the, the camera in your smartphone, um, the front camera can also be, can be used to analyze your eye movements uh, to also assess your risk of cognitive decline or Alzheimer's disease uh, in three or six years from now. Uh, because uh, yeah, the way your eye moves, your eye moves very fast when you read, uh, uh, it's called saccades and so on, it's millisecond movements, but it could be analyzed to predict your risk of, of uh, cognitive decline or other uh, neuropsychiatric diseases. Uh, or the way you type on your keyboard uh, uh, could also be analyzed to also assess your risk of, of uh, specific diseases. Um, so these are a few examples of uh, how AI can be used uh, uh, for, for, uh, for health and, and, and uh, prevention. Of course, this can also have drawbacks. Uh, I imagine you would call your insurance, your health insurance company for a question and you would analyze your voice and they would say, oh, okay, uh, uh, Mr. X or Mrs. Y uh, seems to have an increased risk of a heart attack 10 years from now uh, by analyzing her, her voice. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not something we want, uh, of course. So we have to be very careful on how we will uh, deploy uh, that technology. Uh, but these are a few examples how uh, your smartphone or your computer can be used as a diagnostic uh, tool. Uh, and the uh, same with your smartwatches, of course. Uh, um, so when I was a young medical doctor, uh, when I wanted to take an uh, electrocardiogram, um, it was a big, big bulky device. I had to push down the corridor uh, of the hospital. And uh, now it's just integrated in your watch. Uh, so it can analyze your heart rhythm. Uh, and uh, it just became invisible. Uh, it's part of, of your watch. And uh, also all, all kinds of other diagnostic tools will be integrated in, in wristbands or in your clothing uh, or will be just, uh, yeah, uh, not even on your body, but they will analyze your voice or sound movement, uh, sounds or, uh, or eye movements uh, and so on. So uh, uh, another example, for example, is uh, if you would uh, start to feel sick um, and you start to cough, uh, th uh, that cough could be analyzed. The sound of the cough could be analyzed by your smartphone um, to also assess your, uh, to, to see what kind of uh, uh, infection you have. Is this cough caused by an upper respiratory tract infection or is it pneumonia, which is more deeper in the lungs or is it an asthma induced cough? Uh, uh, so the AI in your smartphone could uh, analyze that. Uh, so that's that's very interesting. And there are also many other uh, interesting applications, but I just will end with one uh, useful one, perhaps for, for your listeners. Uh, these are apps that uh, diagnose diseases. Uh, so uh, an example is the ADA app, uh, A-D-A. 
uh, I, I encourage users to download it. It's, uh, it's a very funny app. Um, so if you feel sick, you just type what you have. You say, so for example, headache, and then the app will ask you questions like, like a medical doctor would do. Uh, it, will, uh, it will ask you questions like, is your headache on one side or both sides of your head? Do you have a fever? Do you have muscle aches, uh, et cetera? And then it comes with a, di a diagnosis. And actually I find that this app asks better questions than most medical doctors would do. It also asks more questions. And, and uh, actually it's, uh, let's say, the diagnosis it comes up with, it uh, arranges them according to their likelihood. And it's also much more accurate than a human medical doctor would, uh, would be able to do so. So I would also foresee a future where people uh, will find out that these apps and these AIs and these digital assistants, health assistants and digital health avatars will be so much better than your overworked human medical doctor who has 3000 patients, doesn't know all the medication of each patient and prehistory and familial history, let alone their genome and epigenome and transcriptome and microbiome output, while your digital doctor will know all this. Uh, so uh, I think medicine is a bit too complicated to uh, let it uh, uh, to humans, uh, uh, to for humans. Uh, so I look very much forward to uh, this uh, AI, uh, let's say, uh, data-driven, uh, much more accurate, uh, let's say, way of diagnosing and of conducting uh, medicine.